Corn Mother, a Native American legend. When Klaus Kerbe, the all maker, lived on earth, there were no people yet. But one day when the sun was high, a youth appeared and called him, Uncle, brother of my mother. This young man was born from the foam of the waves, foam quickened by the wind and warmed by the sun. It was the motion of the wind, the moistness of the water, and the sun's warmth that gave him life. And the young man lived with Klaus Kerbe and became his chief helper. Now, after these two powerful beings had created all manner of things, a beautiful girl came to them. It was the wonderful earth plant and the dew and the sun's warmth which gave her life. Because a drop of dew fell on a leaf and was warmed by the sun, this girl came into being. I am love, said the maiden. I am the strength giver. I am the nourisher. I am the provider of men and animals. They all love me. Then Klaus Kerbe thanked the great mystery above for having sent them the maiden. The youth, the great nephew, married her, and the girl conceived and thus became first mother. And Klaus Kerbe, the great uncle who teaches humans all they need to know, taught their children how to live. Then he went away to dwell in the north. He promised to return if he was needed. The number of humans increased greatly. They lived by hunting, and the more people there were, the less game they found. They were hunting it out, and as the animals decreased, starvation came upon the people, and First Mother pitied them. The little children came to First Mother and said, We are hungry, feed us. But she had nothing to give them, and she wept. She told them, Be patient, I will make some food, then your little bellies will be full. But she kept weeping. Her husband asked, How can I make you smile? How can I make you happy? First Mother replied, there is only one thing that will stop my tears. What is it? asked her husband. It is this. You must bury me for the night in the earth. I could never do that, replied the husband. You must, or I will go on weeping and grieving forever. I have already chosen to sacrifice myself for the greater good of humanity. The distraught husband traveled far away to the north to ask the great instructor, his uncle, Klaus Kerbe, what he should do. You must do what she wants. You must bury her, said Klaus Kerbe. Then the young man went back to his home and it was his turn to weep. But first mother said, tomorrow at high noon you must do it. Bury me in this patch of earth for one night and then leave. When the clock strikes noon the next day, come back and you will find my sacrifice there, a sacrifice given out of love, and it will nourish and strengthen you forever and ever. So it was done. The husband buried his wife and praying he left the place. When he returned the next day, he found the earth covered with tall green tassel plants. The plants offered corn, which was First Mother's sacrifice, given so that the people might live and flourish. All the people partook of First Mother's sacrifice and found it sweet beyond words. Following her instructions, they did not eat it all, but put many kernels back into the earth. In this way, her body and spirit renewed themselves every seven months 
generation after generation. And a few steps away from the spot where they had buried the first mother, there grew another plant, broad-leafed and fragrant. It was first mother's breath, and they heard her spirit talking. Burn this up and smoke it. It is sacred. It will dear your minds, help your prayers, and gladden your hearts. First mother's husband named the first plant scarmonal corn and the second plant tobacco. He told the people, remember and take good care of first mother's gift because she sacrificed everything so that you may all live and flourish. Take good care of her breath because it is the fruit of her sacrifice. Remember her and think of her whenever you eat. Whenever you smoke this sacred plant because she has given her life so that you might live. Yet, she is not gone. She lives in undying love. She renews herself again and again. The end. This story is brought to you by Cultural Cafe. Cultural Cafe is an initiative that strives to narrate the stories of her nation's diversity. It hopes to build bridges to keep kindness, common ground, inclusion, and empathy alive through storytelling. Please support Cultural Cafe by liking, subscribing, or commenting. Thank you.